Hey people, uh, it's February 15th, still freezing cold out, um, minus 22 the night before and minus 11 last night, but the worst is over. But people usually think about, <clears throat> in the winter, they think hot chocolate and soup. Personally, I don't have any use for hot chocolate and I was never into soup because it's awful expensive in a can and it's it's really not very good it's a lot of a lot of liquid and like that and, um, anyway so when we did have pan drippings and stuff left over I didn't want to waste it so I you know would experiment so I found out that it's very easy to make soup and I found out that I don't really need a specific um, recipe just just basic 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 knowledge and a few spices and uh, so anyway mrs. frugal fat guy usually eats most of the soup because she has less variety of stuff on low carb diet so I don't put any um, macaroni or noodles or potato or anything really carby in here but um, last night I made a half a chicken for dinner so I had left over the pan drippings and some bones. That's what's in the pot. I just added some water to it and I'm going to add a little bit more water now to cover everything over. And um, it's that simple to start. Just put the pan drippings and the, and the bones in there with a little bit of water and add some spices. I added oregano, sage, basil, um, uh, what is that red stuff up there? <laughs> you know what I mean, the red stuff. Oops, fogging up the camera. Paprika. Now let's get the camera away from... Um, I don't want any steamy jism on there. Anyway, I'll bring you back when it's time to put the onion and the celery and the stuff because you'll see that that's pretty much a guess based on how much liquid I end up with. See you in a bit. Hey, welcome back. This um, bones and, and juice have been boiling for about an hour and five minutes now. And I'm going to drain them into that strainer. And then you'll see how much I actually started with. It's just going to end up in another pot. You can see the color of the of the liquid. This was teriyaki chicken that I had, so there is some darkening from the teriyaki. And that's what's left of the bones. Now, I didn't leave the good meat on here. I pulled off as much meat as I could. See, this is all stuff that you really wouldn't want to eat. It's just the tendons and that sort of thing. Ow. I mean, could get a couple of pieces off there, but it's not worth it. So, I saved the good breast meat that Mrs. Frugal Fat Guy prefers the white meat anyway. So I say that's going to go in the fire because I still got a fire going because it's cold as hell. And then that's the liquid that we're going to add vegetables to. And um, I'll be back when I'm ready to start that. See ya. Okay, welcome back again. Ready to start with the with the vegetables into the soup. I guess you can get an idea of how deep that liquid is there. Not very, a couple of inch and a half maybe, but. So this is where some of the guesswork comes in. I wish my viewfinder on this camera was on the opposite side because I'm right-handed, but um, this is the best I'm gonna get. So, I'll start with half an onion. I guess I actually should have done this before you came back, but it won't take long. 
not too long. Okay. Meantime, there we go, that's half an onion. Now, celery, I think you probably heard about ways to keep celery for a long time. I think it was Martha Stewart or somebody who said something about put it in wax pay in um, aluminum foil or whatever. So anyway, when we get celery, what I do is cut it up. I put the the long pieces in the Tupperware like this underwater and it stays in the refrigerator and then I have the smaller pieces that I'm going to use now just for the hell of it that I put in this container and these are for making chicken salad, egg salad, potato salad, whatever else, whatever I need celery for this way Mrs. Frugal Fat Guy can eat these big ones with cream cheese or peanut butter or whatever she's into on the particular stage of her diet and the little ones get used up for that and I had read a recipe once for potato soup where they said you could put the celery greens in there but I don't keep the greens I mean they're not worth it so now we'll check these just to be sure that they're not getting old which this one's good If they start getting brown on the edges or any, anything like that, can you see that? Which this one's good. These have been in here for, well we bought them before Mrs. Frugal Fat Guy went away. So I guess it's only like two weeks, but they last a long time in here as long as they stay cold. And with, in this house it's just me and Mrs. And, Buster hasn't figured out how to open the refrigerator yet, so he doesn't get in there. So we don't go in there too often, so it stays good and cold in there. Keep the milk in the back of the refrigerator like that. We don't have trouble with stuff going, going bad. These are pretty big pieces. I mean, some people would prefer smaller, but when I'm eating something, I like to, I like to kind of know what's in there instead of just... You know, they will wilt, and I'll show you the pot in a minute. Well, I'll show it to you now, because I'm going to put a little bit more in. There's the pot. That's not enough. There's way too much liquid for the amount of vegetable. So we'll come back. I have here a little pepper. I got these in a bag at Aldi's. They, I think they were $2.69 for the bag. And they've been lasting quite a while too, so I'll put this in there just for color. You don't really need to see what's going on behind me. I keep compost in here. Maybe someday I'll show you how much I have from just the winter. It's the equivalent of a trash can full. I have a trash can out there that got so rusty it has no bottom on it, a metal can, which is perfect because you have to let your compost drain, otherwise you end up with rotten sludge. The can is filled to the top. That's partly because some of it froze instead of composted, but it will start thawing out soon. Put this in there for some color. Now. If you watched any of the other videos, you might have came, cr come across the, the growing garlic video. And if I would have known how easy it is to grow garlic, I would have started doing it years and years ago. I had a neighbor in Shandaken who used to come and take the leaves from the motel, big tops full, to mulch his garlic patch. But I had no idea it was actually that easy to grow. It gets planted in the fall. On a, I do it on Columbus Day weekend, so I always can remember when to do it. So from 
it went in, this one went in a year and a half ago in October, and then it was harvested last summer, somewhere around July when the scapes, the big things, the stalks grow and stand up straight, then it's time to harvest. So if you harvest it and leave enough stem on like this, they'll last for months, and this is still nice and firm, and um, you know, it's what? August, September, October, November, December, January, February, seven months. So then when I'm ready to have them on hand, I don't think you can see that up there. When I need to have them on hand, I take that part off them and then they're kind of almost ready to go. It'd be nice to have a camera person. So all I gotta do is take the peel off now. There's a shortcut way to do this. Here's the compost to the dimension, and this is just from a day or two. There's an orange peel, coffee grounds, an eggshell. I don't know what else goes in, potato peels or anything but meat. You don't want to put meat in there. All right, that's good. The other way to do garlic is to crush it like that, but People with OCD, I think we prefer to do this to it. I guess it actually, even though I'm right-handed, might have been better to have the camera on the other side. But, live and learn. Where does that make it easier for me to see the viewfinder? Mercy. Oh, that is so much better. So now we're gonna put some more onion in. Here's the whole, the whole onion is gonna go in. I wonder if I ever told the punchline from the blonde joke. I think it was the blonde joke that I told on a different video. And it came back. So if you slice it this way though, these will fall apart. get in there to, they'll come into strips which is perfectly fine and then we'll put in some more celery too I see a spot of brown in the celery container I don't know, I think I mentioned the spices already, right? Yeah, I did when I was saying about the paprika that I couldn't remember. I didn't put anything really spicy in here because this is FFG doesn't prefer hot stuff, but if I was making it, I'd probably put in some red pepper or something, who knows? A little more celery. Certainly wouldn't hurt to put carrot in here if you have carrot. I'm thinking about putting frozen broccoli in, but if I do, it would be at the time when it's reheated. Same thing with the chicken. I, I, I can show you the chicken somewhere along the way, but I'm not going to put the chicken in now because the chicken's already been cooked. There's no reason to have it cooking anymore. in the pot. Pot's still very hot, remember, so it's sitting on a sitting on a pot holder. Now let's see if we got enough. Nope. I lost some video somewhere I think. Anyway, hopefully uh there, you didn't see a big gap just now but I've been adding vegetables to this, and I'll probably add a little bit more celery, and then put it back on to, actually maybe I'll add what's left in this container, and be done with it. That looks like the easy way to do things. I 
There's a little green piece. I'm not going to use it. Got enough. There's that. This. Don't have to use that. And we can use that. else to go in here that isn't too cobby can't have anything that's too cobby because that's the whole point for mrs. frugal is to not have carbs so if you have any other ingredients leave them in the comments below next time I'll see if I can add them in I did a beef with the pan drippings from a from a chuck roast almost overpriced ridiculously overpriced chuck roast that came out good too but all right now we got enough that's good enough so on the heat for a little while See you back here when it's finished boiling. Hey, last time you're coming back because this is going to be it. It's been on boiling for about 20 minutes. I tasted it already and it's adequate. There's a slight bit of crunch to the vegetables, which is good because it's going to get reheated again before it gets eaten. Here's the chicken. Already cut up. That's going to go in after it cools off. And then it's going to go into one Tupperware. Or maybe more than one Tupperware. We'll see. Depends on how, how much there is. But it's about seasoned right. I mean, it's not too strong. I could show you what the liquid looks like. I should have kept the spoon. But... Get a slightly larger spoon. Okay, to get an idea of how dark it is, if I could get the light from stop shining on it. So, I mean, I've had bar soup when I used to work in Manhattan. It's excellent. I had bar soup in Manhattan. That was the chicken soup was yellow. And every now and then you get a bite of liver or else whatever kind of other guts they put in there and that was disgusting but anyway so I don't make things that that I had a bad experience with so I gotta free up the camera get this downloaded and this afternoon I'll be assembling a kitchen sink see how far I get before I have to call the plumber have a great spring I'll say hello to a dog, a cold dog. <laughs> he runs in here and stands in front of the fireplace whenever he starts getting chilly. Right? Anything to say? No? Okay. Have a good one, people.